operator rate coding. The example I always gave, or like to give is you're playing a video game, your ability to kind of tap the button quick can improve. You know, same thing when you recruit uh, a muscle fiber, your recruitment gets quicker. And you can actually have structural changes at the neuromuscular junction. That's an actual physical change which causes it to happen. Um, let me just uh, kind of tie in some training stuff as well as uh, slow twitch and fast twitch. Uh, let's say that uh, I did a 10 week training program that focused on explosive weightlifting and speed training. Uh, could I convert some of my fast twitch A fibers to fast twitch B fibers through explosive weight training and speed training? Is that possible? Yes, that's possible. You can convert between A and B, fast switch A and fast switch B. Would I convert some of my fast twitch to, or some of my slow twitch to fast twitch with that same explosive sprint training? Would that happen? Okay, technically no. It's not, the answer we're going to say is that no, you can't switch between slow twitch and fast twitch. Okay, what if I had uh, two people who were going to run a, uh, a marathon and person A was 80% slow twitch, 20% fast twitch, another person was a little less slow twitch. They were say 60% slow twitch and 40%. So we have 80% slow twitch, 60% slow twitch. They're going to run a marathon. Who would you predict is going to win based on having that fiber type information? Can you predict who's going to win based on that fiber type information? The answer is no. Fiber type information alone, you cannot accurately predict who's going to win a competitive race. Okay, now having said that, what if I said, okay, these are on a, a young up and coming uh, distance runner and we wanted to know would the person who had let's say 60% slow twitch, would they have the ability to likely be a, an elite Olympic marathon? at 60% slow twitch? The answer is probably not, because success in elite activities likely requires a certain fiber type distribution. For a marathon, an elite distance or endurance athlete probably requires how much slow twitch? 70, 80% and higher. Okay, 50, 60%, no matter how much they train, uh, it's, it's probably not Okay, with DOMS, do you remember what DOMS stands for, D-O-M-S? Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. Okay, uh, true or false, uh, not cooling down properly after a high intensity exercise bout and clearing lactic acid and other waste products from your muscle, that's the primary cause of delayed onset muscle soreness. Oh, false. The answer is false. Okay, that's not the cause. What's believed to be one of the primary causes of delayed onset muscle soreness? Okay, they come primarily from eccentric contractions which cause what in the muscle? Little tears. Yeah, small micro tears that happen in the muscle. Okay, these small micro tears are believed to be the primary instigator, whether it irritates pain receptors or whether those small micro tears cause uh, a little bit of swelling as part of the repair process and that swelling uh, causes the soreness and pain. It's not exactly clear, but those are believed to be the primary causes of, of DOMS. Okay, and eccentric contraction, do you, what's the difference between eccentric and concentric? Just to make sure you're clear on that. Concentric contraction is where the muscle shortens. Eccentric contraction is where the muscle's contracting, but it's lengthening. So if I had a, a dumbbell and I'm lowering it slowly, my bicep is contracting, but it's lengthening as I do it, that's an eccentric contraction. Downhill running is a great example of an eccentric load on the quads it causes muscle soreness. Okay, questions kind of about muscle physiology. Is that helpful as kind of a review? Okay, questions about those? Okay, just to kind of work through some of the sample questions, and you, you have more in your in your handout or that are online of sample questions. Maybe save those towards the end. Uh, and these are quite simple. The most accurate way to determine muscle fi fiber type percentage, in other words, your percent slow twitch and fast twitch, what do we have to do to determine it? If we're doing it, the most accurate way would be a muscle biopsy. 
Okay, we did over here, we did a Cybex test where you could estimate fiber type distribution. Uh, which muscle fiber type has the highest myoglobin content? Remember, what is myoglobin again? An iron containing protein that's found in your skeletal muscle. And what does it help with? What's its purpose? To help with oxygen diffusion. Okay, so if it's related to oxygen diffusion, which energy system would you say that myoglobin is more connected with? Oxidative or, or glycolytic? Oxidative. And which muscle fiber type is the most oxidative? A B type. Of. Okay, and that's logically how I figure it out. You can memorize it or you can reason your way through it. In the first four weeks of a strength training program, the majority of the strength gains are due to neural adaptations or neural factors, not due to hypertrophy. Okay, with hypertrophy, let's say if I went and did a strength training bout in the SRSC and uh, I did a whole bunch of bicep curls and my arms got bigger, okay, what, what, am I actually making more muscle fibers through that one exercise bout? Now, why did my muscle fibers get bigger? It's called transient hypertrophy. You remember why? Water yeah, because plasma gets trapped. You're actually squeezing the muscle and the blood vessel goes through the muscle. You're squeezing the water portion of the blood out of the blood vessel into the muscle. It causes that short-term swelling to occur. That goes away. All right, let's, uh, let's shift to energy systems. Uh, some major topics, and these aren't all inclusive. Uh, remember, the test is only going to cover things that were in the notes or that we talked about specifically in class. There's going to be nothing tricky from the readings uh, in the book themselves if we didn't cover it. Uh, three forms of storing energy. How can you store ATP? And, and we technically don't store ATP. We store, we store a small amount of ATP, but we store most of our energy in three forms. They are what? How do you have energy stored in your body? Fat. Fat. Glycogen or carbohydrates and protein. Okay. Uh, what's the primary fuel that the body uh, would prefer to use of those three during exercise? They would prefer to burn carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Carbohydrates. Uh, comparatively speaking, between carbohydrates and fats, you store more energy in your body as, as fat. You store a lot less energy in your body as carbohydrates. What's the reason why the body, even though it prefers carbohydrate as a fuel, it will store more energy as fat? It, it weighs less per volume. It's less dense. Okay, carbohydrate, the hydrate, again, it stands for water. It's a wet molecule. Fat is anhydrous, which means it's dry. So just from that standpoint, it weighs less. You get more energy per gram from fat than you do from carbohydrates. Uh, what's one of the consequences of the fact that we don't store as much carbohydrate in your body? What's one of the consequences that can happen? You could do prolonged exercise and run out of your stored carbohydrate, and that can be a problem. Okay, three energy systems. We had the ATP, PCR energy system. We had glycolysis. And we had the oxidative energy system. And for each one, we had some different 